So we've decided, as you know, to boycott Christmas. It's not a new idea at all. Oh, it started a long time ago, but it never gained the traction nationally. Did you know that Frederick Douglass, one of our great ancestors, listen to what he said about these holidays. He was talking not just about Christmas, no. A Christmas thought from Frederick Douglass. Quote, the holidays are part and parcel of the gross fraud, wrong, and inhumanity of slavery. From what I know of the effect of these holidays upon the slave, I believe them to be among the most effective means in the hands of the slave master in keeping down the spirit of insurrection. These holidays serve as conductors or safety valves to carry off the rebellious spirit of enslaved humanity. So all these holidays that have been introduced to us by our former slave masters and their children, they have a purpose. It let the slaves off for a day, which they really appreciated, and then they had games and competitions between the slaves, and then they allowed the slaves to take a drink, and they would give prizes out to the slave that drank the most and didn't show signs of drunkenness. And isn't that the way we behave today? Our days off, which is called their holidays, give us a day. And of course, the liquor stores are always busy on that day because that's the culture of the observance of America's holiday seasons. The greatest of these holiday seasons is winter holidays. And let's look at the money that the business people get for Christmas. All the holidays that America celebrates brings in a total of three quarters of a trillion dollars, 750 billion and 602 and one tenth billion of this $750 billion pie comes in just two months, November and December, which makes up nearly 30% of a retailer's annual sale. Now, the winter holidays, 602.1 billion. Back to school and college, 74.9 billion dollars. Mother's Day, 19.9 billion dollars. Valentine's Day, 17.3 billion. Easter, 15.9 billion, Father's Day, 12.8 billion, the Super Bowl, 8.7 billion, Halloween, 7.4 billion, and St. Patrick's Day, 4.8 billion. Holidays are a bonanza for the business community. But the worst of these holidays is Thanksgiving, and Christmas. The, the native people are angry that we would dare celebrate Thanksgiving when Christopher Columbus sat down with the native people and had dinner. No, the native people were the turkey on the table for those folk. 
the Native Americans are angry. The Western Hemisphere is upset because before Columbus came, there was 112 to 120 million Indians in the Western Hemisphere, particularly in North America. And when Master Farad Muhammad came to us, that number had come all the way down from 112 to 120 million down to 2 million. So we don't celebrate Columbus and we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Of course we give thanks, but we ought to keep our money this Thanksgiving in our pocket. If you can afford a turkey, fine. But the purpose for this should not be Thanksgiving like the early pilgrims celebrated it. Our Thanksgiving should be every day that we're alive and in the company of our families. Don't spend your money up on Thanksgiving. And the day after, isn't that what it's called? Black Friday? I would like to see Black Friday absent of black and brown people. Can you imagine on Black Fridays in the past when we rushed to the big stores and you would watch them watching us? I want them to watch for us that we won't be there. Black Friday, Black Saturday, Black Sunday, all the way to the new year, put your money in your pocket. Now, if you notice, when the football players were about to deprive that university of the million or so dollars on that Saturday, the last Saturday that is, immediately what they wanted, they got. Martin Luther King said, look, you don't have to run around talking bad. You don't have to gather any Molotov cocktails and burn up your own community. Elijah Muhammad said, you don't even have to fire one shot. All you have to do is fire the cannon of our unity. And that's what brought us to the table, and that's what gave us a little measure of justice. Now suppose we withheld our money during November and December. That's easy to do. Just keep your money in your pocket. And if you keep your money in your pocket, that's money that you will have saved. And imagine if we save hundreds of millions of dollars during that time. We will have money to spend and money to invest in creating a future for ourselves. Did you know that if we just spent one-tenth of one percent of what we spend for these holidays with black businesses, they would be able to hire thousands of black people giving them jobs. Imagine if we knew how to invest the money that we would save we could be free, justified and equal, building our own economic base. Now let's look again at this Christmas. Did you know that in 1962, Medgar Evers, some of you young ones have not heard of him, but look him up. He was a great brother from the NAACP in Jackson, Mississippi. 
Medgar Evers decided because of the ill treatment of the blacks in Mississippi, particularly in the city of Jackson, that they would not support those big businesses in Jackson, Mississippi with black dollars. The boycott that he did was 99% successful. So successful that the mayor had to come out and literally beg black people, spend money. We'll protect you. We'll give you police protection from the boycotters. Not today. We don't need protection. We're not going to show up. We intend to make our unity felt in America. Unfortunately, within a few months, Medgar Evers was assassinated. In 1963, he was murdered right in the uh, garage, not in the garage, but in the driveway to his garage in his home. That same year, they bombed the church in Birmingham, Alabama, and several of our young girls were killed. Dr. Martin Luther King was so upset. He said, let's boycott Christmas way back in 63 Dr. King wanted to do this to redistribute the pain that we were feeling over the loss of Medgar Evers over the loss of our children in that bombing and I think it was Roy Wilkins of the NAACP said well we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do it because we don't want to deprive our children of their toys. And of course, there'll be some who will say the same now. But keep your eye on them because they're working for the enemy. They are not the leaders that you think they are if in the throes of our pain as a people, we want to hold our money. And some of these weak leaders will come and say, no, no, we don't want to deprive the children of their toys. Brothers and sisters, Santa Claus is a lie. The great Adam Clayton Powell told us, boycott Christmas. Santa Claus is a lie. You who are Christians, you read the book of John where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus is the truth, why would you lie to your children on his birthday telling a lie that a big fat Caucasian came down a chimney that you don't have with his eight reindeer and gave you something that your parents went out and sacrificed and went into debt, by the way, for another year? to give you a puzzle or a doll or a little pistol or whatever your heart's desire. You'll get your toys, but not now, not November, not December. We'll find a black store that's selling things that have meaning. Most of the gifts that you give on Christmas really have no meaning. The best gift you could give on Christmas is you. Your heart, your love, 
for your family, your friends. Let's make this Christmas a Christmas where Christ is back in the center of what we believe is his birthday. Now, you know, the slave master let the slaves get drunk. The slave master put it in the holidays. And every single holiday, particularly Christmas, the liquor stores get our money. Let's rid ourselves of the lust of wine and strong drink. Let's keep that money in our pocket. And you know when they look up and they don't see you at the liquor store, they will know that the boycott is successful. Black folk are rising and we feel their power. Then whatever demands we put on the table because this boycott is just the beginning. Of course, don't be afraid. Their loss of money makes them desperate and of course, they're going to want to uh, do something about it. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me, he said, brother, I can't promise that we won't get a hickey. Not on your neck, but <laughs> on your head. I can't promise you that some of us won't go to jail. I can't promise you that some of us won't even lose our lives in this quest for justice. But he said, I can promise you victory. And victory means that what we seek, we shall find. What we ask for, we will get. And any door that we knock on, as a unified body, that door will open. And that heart, even if they don't feel it, the loss of their economic strength will cause the door to open. It's time now. Did you know that in the book of John, the thing that caused Jesus to be murdered, betrayed, and lied on was he got angry. And in his anger, he took a cord and he twisted that cord, cords together into a whip. And he went in and drove the money changers out of the temple and turned their tables over. This is Jesus, angry, whipping the money changers. Well, who were the money changers in that day? And who are the money changers today? Elijah Muhammad said, and I, I think I got a quote here for him. He said, if one well twisted cord is hard to break, what about a hundred cords twisted together? possible to break and that is the power of our unity may Allah bless us to be unified in mind and spirit may we find joy in keeping our money in our pockets 
man, just think about the discipline that you will impose on yourself. Oh, do, do you see on television? All kind of sales are being offered. Oh, man, Christmas is coming early this year. They started playing all the Christmas music. Rudolph, the red nose reindeer. Santa is big, man. I even saw this morning on television a black face Santa. If you see one, tell him, come on, brother, get up out of that foolish uniform. The uniform that you got is what is catching hell, and that's your black face. We can't take that off. We're suffering because we're black, and we're suffering more because of the lack of knowledge. Christmas is a pagan holiday that the enemy invented. It came out of the Babylonian uh, era. Did you know that? Did you know that the sun worshipers that were heathens, they would go in the forest and cut down a tree and then deck it with silver and gold and fasten it with nails on the floor? Look in the 10th chapter of Jeremiah, verses 1 through 5, and you'll see that this is a heathen practice, that the pagans, when they became Christians, they didn't give up their pagan practices. Now, let me close this with these holidays that are based on paganism. Did you know that when you put your lights on, put it all over your house, put a candle in the window and a wreath, that's because the people worship the sun. And next month, December the 21st, is the shortest day of the year. So the sun worshipers thought that their God was leaving them. So they were entreating their God to come back to them. So they would burn a Yule log. They lit candles. They cut the tree out of the forest. Yes. And when Constantine became a Christian from being a pagan. He substituted the worship of the sun for the worship of the son of God. But how do you carry out the honor and worship of Christ? Drunk, that's part of the holiday season, foolish, doing unrighteous things. We have dishonored Jesus by the way we practice pagan, heathen practices as ex-slaves in the manner that we were acculturated to act. Did you know that the money that we get out of our economy, 1.1 to 1.3 trillion dollars, we spend it almost as fast as we get it. I was shocked when I heard some statistics that the Asian people Chinatown, Koreatown. Their money circulates in their community nearly a whole month before it goes. The Jewish people, their money circulates in their community for 20-some days before it leaves. Even our Mexican family, they're better than we. 
in turning their money around in their own community. But when I heard that our money leaves in six hours, where did that come from? Did you know that under Abraham Lincoln, he established the Freedmen's Bank. And black people coming out of slavery put over $5 million in several of the Freedmen's Banks. And through a scheme, they closed the banks down and all our money was lost. This crippled in us a desire to save. And most of us have not saved anything. As fast as we get the money, we spend it. Did you know that when we were sharecropping, if we saved our money and put it in a mattress, the slave master could come, go in our house or a little place where we lived and take our money. If we hid it in a bale of cotton, they would search. And if they found it, they'd take it. It's part of the slave code. A black man must never save money. A black man must never invest money. A black man must never think about economic development. So as fast as you get your money, you run away to spend it because we learned during slavery that's the only way we could keep the power of our money because the slave master would take it if we saved it, so we went right out and spent it. And now it's part of our culture. $1.1 trillion to $1.3, and it's gone. Fast as we get it, we spend it. So we'll be breaking some bad habits this Christmas with your help. We'll be getting a, a step up on economic development for our people, starting with this boycott. And all you're doing is squeezing your money in your pocket. Just squeeze it. Don't throw it away. Don't give it away. Find a black business that is selling things and spend some of your money with them. Elijah Muhammad hated these big retail stores. You know why? They come into our community, they buy in bulk and they can lower the price and they put all little black businesses out of business. We should say to hell with them. Find a black store that you can support. Find a brown store that you can support. And this Christmas, after we get to the new year by God's grace, we'll get ready to get on to the second phase of our work. It can't stop until justice flows down the mountain like a river and righteousness like a mighty stream. You be the or else. God is the big or else, but you and I can be a little or else. And remember the words of Dr. King. He said, go buy the business stores and tell them, God sent me by here to say to you, you're not treating his people right. These are Dr. King's words. God said he wants you to treat his people fair. That should be first on your agenda, treating 
God's people fail. He said, but if you don't do that, in our agenda, we will withdraw our support economically from you. We're going to do that until the black life, the cause of justice, is honored and respected. May Allah bless you. There will be more messages like this coming to you. Pass these words. Sit around a table and discuss it. Get your Bible and look at it. And if the enemy is so angry with me and us for calling this boycott, then don't bother my people. Come to me. I'm talking to the enemy. I'm waiting on you. My God has something for you. If you think that you can put over what you've been doing to my brothers before me, try it. And God will be quick to show you. Dr. King is probably the last great black leader that you will kill. Stand up, black people. Stand up, brown people. Stand up, indigenous people. Keep your money. And let's show the world our unity and watch them bow. Thank you for listening. And may Allah bless you with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.